Kamusta kayo lahat? Welcome to Pinoy Bounce. I hope you guys are all doing amazing. I'm your host for tonight, Marky. Mark, over here on my left side, we got Ingrid. How you feeling? Good. Awesome. Great. Awesome. Over there, the other side of the court, we got James. King James, how you feeling there? I'm feeling good, brother. How are you? I'm doing awesome because <laughs> on my right side, we got our special guest bringing him back. Jamil, how are you feeling today? Thanks for having me back. Excited to talk some hoops. Brand ah. new set and brand new crew. Woo, let's get it. We gotta have you back on our brand new set. That's why we're excited tonight. <laughs> and to start off, James, we're gonna go to you for some fun facts. So today's NBA fun fact is all about Giannis Antetokounmpo. Back in his rookie year, Milwaukee Bucks was facing Charlotte Bobcats. And before the game, he went to Western Union and sent all his cash and money to his family in Greece. While taking the taxi going to the game, he realized he didn't have no cash or any money. So he starts sprinting and running because he didn't want to be late. And luckily enough, a couple saw him and asked him, is he the rookie for Milwaukee Bucks? A 6'9", 6'11", running down the street. They asked him and gave him a ride. And after that, the rest is history. He became an NBA MVP. So my question to you guys actually is, Tony Parker just retired. And what is the most memorable thing that happened to Tony Park, Tony Parker's career? Ooh. Well, it has to be that famous floater. Oh, he, that, he, he made basically that. basically invented yeah. the floater. And, uh, he made it what it is today. Yeah, so he's basically known for that move. Yeah. And obviously those championships. Yeah. Well, the fact that he played with Duncan, Ginobili, and with Kawhi. So mm -hmm. that was also a huge impact that what he did with the Spurs. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of them as a big three, with Punk, Parker, Ginobili, and Duncan, how do you compare that to what, the, the big three in the history of the NBA? It's because of what they have accomplished and how long they've stayed together as a core for the Spurs. Ooh, I believe a, they carried that tradition of like fundamental basketball, mm, exactly. especially with they had uh, Popovich as a coach. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what it was. You know, a lot of movement and everything. Like basically, what they how Pop use, uh, utilized him and his team and how he carried on from the next. You know teams that he's developed over the years, right? So they're just probably the trio that blended the best, I would say. Like no egos. Mm -hmm. All put the uh, egos out the door and just made got the work done. Like they just won championships after championships and they're great leaders as you can see after their careers. Now all three jerseys uh, up in that AT and T center all beside each other. That's a pretty cool moment. Yeah. I mean for Tony Parker I feel like he's he was not the kind of person that you just kinda of draft him and hopefully you know, he was already good. He was developed by Pop. Like, him and Manu was, you know, they were yeah. undiscovered. Euro like, they kind of brought attention to the NBA in terms of, God, there's amazing European players or international yeah. players, not just people from the U.S. And, and I think they were the ones that kind of paved the way them and along with Dirk are saying there is a lot of really good talented European They provide players. that open door for mm -hmm. the next, you know, European basketball players today mm -hmm. that we see, like, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, Matt Thomas is one of them. Mm -hmm. Well, not really, but yeah. he's like, it's just that, you know what I mean, for the opportunity, the opportunity. given to them. Yeah, for sure. Ginobili and Parker, they're, they weren't lottery picks. They were mm -hmm. late first round, uh, early second round. So those are, like you said, open the door for those types of players that doesn't matter where you where you get drafted. As long as you can hoop, you can hoop, you know? Maybe. What do you think, James? Um, my favorite, actually, like memorable moment for him is when he made that clutch shot against the Miami Heat in game one in 2013. Mm. So for Tony Parker, Manny Ginobili, and Duncan, they were the big three, but they kind of accepted their roles. And that's the difference of a, a lot of superstars right now. Sometimes they don't accept their roles and they end up losing the game, kind of like Kyrie, what happened to Kyrie. So uh, every year they come back. Every year they always made it to playoffs and they s somehow make it to the championship. So... Another question is like, tonight, Paul George is coming back. What do you guys think about the Clippers? Ooh. Are they a clear favorite? Uh, uh, it's scary to think like how good they already are with just Kawhi. Championship contenders is what I'm claiming. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would say that for sure they're contenders on paper, mm -hmm. but PG's, PG's my guy. He's one of my favorite players in the NBA, mm -hmm. but I still got to see the two of them play together. Very style of play, very similar. Mm -hmm. And they have Lou Williams, all three of them that want the ball. Mm -hmm. And we'll see how that works offensively. But defensively, we know what we'll get. All NBA oh, yeah. defense. Basically, length as the, probably the biggest length out of the, uh, the whole NBA is the Clippers. And 
yeah, like they're shutdown defenders, but I still have to see them play offensively together mm -hmm. to, for me to be fully convinced. They mm -hmm. are the best two way for by sure. far, like in the NBA franchise, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, they can, they can guard one to four. I mean, yeah. Kawhi can guard one of the two players and then two best players. And then who's the best defender out of the two of them, if you were to put it here? Ooh. Because I think Paul George is up there. I think he's very underrated. Well, he led the league last year in steals, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, so, but Kawhi, like, we're biased because we've seen it firsthand. Yeah. And, like, no pun intended, his hands was, like, it's massive, insane, right? So, yeah. <laughs> but if you were to ask, I, I would probably say Kawhi. Yeah. Just because he's won Defensive Player of the Year, mm -hmm. like, twice. So. That's true. Yeah. In terms of... Um, Whose team, whose team is this? Like, you know, there's always going to be a question about that mm -hmm. when you put two superstars together. Do we have to see where it goes or do you kind of have an idea where this team is going to be led by? Yeah. I think it's given already. Or from yeah. what I see, Kawhi. Mm -hmm. I mean, look what he did with us with the Raptors from before. So imagine, let alone with the Clippers itself. Mm -hmm. right. So you feel like George is just kind of going to say, give... The well, backs and see, I'm going to play the, the, the Robin to this Batman Robin kind of race. He kind of has to, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we mm -hmm. we saw firsthand, like, Kawhi took a whole team t on his back, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, as James was mentioning with Tony Parker, these guys accepted mm -hmm. the roles. So, mm -hmm. we got to see Paul George will accept being that Robin to Kawhi. Yeah, mm -hmm. we don't sleep on Robin, anyways. Like, literally, <laughs> if we look at a comic book standpoint, like, Boy yeah. Wonder. That's true. Was, like, there was no Batman without Robin. I, mean, mm -hmm. I see. What's in turn, like like you mentioned? You guys mentioned that they're gonna they're gonna be the favorites to win. What's gonna be the the detriment to them having that favor, um, that favoritism to win the championship? What would be the what would hinder them from winning the championship Ooh. if at this point it's Golden Tate out of the picture? Well, their bench has showed th that bench is good, yeah. so I can't really say the bench. You got Lou Williams, Montrezl Harrell, mm -hmm. Mo Harkless. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not quite sure at this point. They're off to a good start. Mm. Probably, I would say, like I said, the two of them sharing the ball. Mm. That's that's probably I would say for now. Yeah, that would be the biggest factor yeah. for sure. Yeah. Mm. What about like to me? It's, I think it's injuries. I feel like oh, if yeah. these guys can stay oh. healthy. Kawhi's chronic injury. Yeah, yeah. both of them. And that's so, whole, I don't know if it's just low management. Or just, yeah, it's actually not official when it comes to NBA when you want to say, like, if you want to say he has rest, you have to claim it. It's actually well, they got his injury. Yeah, they yeah. got fined for it. They're right? inconsistent so, with their yeah. reports. Yeah. Because cool. you, it's not, like, load management isn't legit, mm -hmm. right? This is something that, like, we came up with last year, right? Mm -hmm. Or, like, now they're trying to bring it over to the Clippers. So it's mm -hmm. not. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, James, what do you think about that? I think whatever's stopping them is, it all comes down to injuries because of what the history is. But uh, before going to break, let's talk about the stat of the night. So the stat of the night goes to John Stockton. John Stockton is the assist leader in NBA history. He had 15,806 assists in total. And the second is Jason Kidd, 12,091 assists. Another NBA fun fact, if you take off the last six years of John Stockton's career, he will still be the assist leader of the NBA.